Hi, I'm Dan Stair of Daniel's Training Services, and I provide training and consulting services for the management of waste and also for the transportation of hazardous materials. This video will be looking at the transportation of hazardous materials, and even more specifically, this will be one of what I hope to be a series of videos looking specifically at the classification, the packaging, the marking, and the labeling, and the shipping of lithium batteries. So, this will be one, again, of hopefully of a series of those videos. Um, first off, the purpose of this video, then, is to explain the packaging and hazard communication methods required for the transportation of a smaller lithium battery contained in equipment by ground, highway or rail, subject only to the regulations of the U.S. Department of Transportation and PHMSA, the Pipeline and Hazardous Materials Safety Administration. So we're looking at a very limited scope in this video. Okay, a couple things, some disclaimers. I have a disclaimer video. You can check that out. So be careful when you're watching this video and for the information it contains. Now the scope, again, very limited, very focused. Just talking about lithium batteries, lithium ion, and lithium metal, so both of them, but only the smaller lithium batteries. Also, in a very specific packaging configuration. We're only going to talk about shipping lithium batteries contained in the equipment they are meant to power. So that's how they're shipped, in the equipment. Um, and we're looking only at two modes of transport, highway or rail. So it's staying on the ground. And finally, again, solely within the United States, solely subject to the hazardous materials regulations of PHMSA within the U.S. Department of Transportation. Now I have a video, check it out, that explains all of that classification, the different kinds of batteries and configurations and modes of transport. Look at that video to make sure that this video applies to what you're planning on doing. Um, like I said, other videos will address shipping different batteries, different configurations, different packaging requirements by air, by vessel, all that will be handled separately. Okay, so we classify the lithium battery you intend to ship. All right, so let's be focused, let's be clear on this. The battery could be lithium ion or lithium metal. The regulations addressed in this video uh, apply to both, all right? It has to be a smaller lithium battery, so you gotta know your lithium content in the battery to understand that part of the classification. Um, it must be shipped, packaged and shipped, where the battery is contained in the equipment it's meant to power. Um, now, because of all that, a battery shipped in that way within the U.S. is subject to a packaging exception. You can get a break from most, not all, but most of the regulations. There are, however, very specific packaging and hazard communication methods required and that's the whole purpose of this video. Again, see my earlier video that goes through all of the classification of a lithium battery and all those different terms you need to be familiar with before you even get here to this video. Okay, so we've got a shipping description and the shipping description for the types of batteries we're talking about in this video, there's two of them. The first is a identification number, it's UN identification number, is 3481. So it's UN 3481 lithium ion batteries contained in equipment. That's its proper shipping name. If you want to, you can add the words including lithium ion polymer batteries. That entry is, is optional. It is hazard class 9, so it's in the hazard class 9 miscellaneous, and there's a new one now for hazard class 9 lithium batteries, okay? And there is no packing group. So that's one of our shipping descriptions if you're shipping a lithium ion battery. The other one that might be addressed in this video, or that would, could be covered by this video, is UN3091, so UN3091 lithium metal batteries contained in equipment. 
including lithium alloy batteries. That part is optional. So the including lithium alloy batteries, that text you don't have to include. It also is hazard class 9. It also has no packing group. So those are the two shipping descriptions addressed in this video. Okay, now we have to follow the packing instructions. And the packing instructions for all lithium batteries are found in one place. Title 49 of the Code of Federal Regulations in Part 173, Section 185. So it looks like 49 CFR 173.185, all right? Now, the packaging exception for smaller lithium batteries is in 173.185C, all right? So that's a subparagraph of Section 185. And that subparagraph contains most of the information in this video. Now, there are some requirements that still remain from subparagraphs A and B in 185. So there's some requirements there that you have to comply with. Those are that the lithium battery itself must be manufactured under a United Nations uh, test procedure. It's got to be tested and shown that it can pass these certain United Nations tests, the UN Manual of Tests and Criteria. Now, the manufacturer of the battery has to do that, and they must maintain records to show that they did that. However, as the shipper of the lithium battery, you must ensure it's been done. So you don't have to do the testing, you don't have to keep a record of the testing, but you do need to contact the manufacturer to make sure that it's been done and that they can back it up. Otherwise, you can't ship those batteries, all right? So the batteries, in the first place, have to be manufactured to a specific level of quality, okay? We don't want to ship bad batteries. All right, um, now, uh, there's some other basic requirements. So for example, uh, the package itself that you use for your lithium batteries, and it could be something like this right here, okay? Uh, the package itself uh, must meet general packing requirements that are also in Title 49 of the Code of Federal Regulations. So the general packing requirements that you must meet, in addition to everything else, are in 173.24 and 49 CFR 173.24A. Pretty basic stuff there, pretty common sense, you know, the package isn't damaged, it's not leaking, you know, it's, it, it's not incompatible with the batteries, pretty basic stuff there um, that you must comply with. Uh, there are some other general packing requirements specific to lithium batteries. So for example, the lithium batteries must be packaged in a manner to prevent short circuits, to prevent movement within the outer package, and to prevent accidental activation of the equipment. They don't tell you how to do that. Those are the general requirements. They just say do it. Okay, so again, package to, in a manner to prevent short circuits, to prevent movement within the outer package, and to prevent accidental activation of the equipment. Okay. Um, also, some general stuff. Uh, uh, the outer package, um, oh, now here we're getting specific. Okay, that's the general stuff. Here's where we get specific to shipping lithium batteries contained in equipment. The outer packages must be rigid. That's all it says. But listen to this. Unless the equipment itself provides enough protection. So here's the thing. You're shipping lithium batteries contained in equipment. You don't even necessarily need outer packaging. You only need outer packaging if the equipment itself doesn't provide enough protection. So if you determine that the, the equipment doesn't provide enough protection for the lithium battery when you ship it, then you're going to have to provide what's identified as a rigid outer package. But nothing fancy, not a specification packaging. Um, the package does not have to be able to pass the 1.2 meter drop test, okay? Some lithium battery packages do. This one does not. So no 1.2 meter drop test. Uh, also, there is not a 
30 kilogram or 66 pound gross weight limit for the package. Some lithium batteries do have that gross weight limit for the package. These batteries don't. Lithium batteries shipped in equipment do not have a gross weight limit for the package. Okay, So pretty straightforward. Packaging in good condition, uh, rigid outer packaging if you need it. All right. So the packaging itself pretty straightforward. Um, as you can see in this situation here and in a couple others that I have here, none of these are a DOT specification packaging. They're pretty much just a good, sturdy, solid cardboard box. That'll work. Okay. Now, the hazard communication. That's where it gets a little bit more difficult. Okay. And then there's some new regs that made it even more complicated. So, first off, a shipping paper, like a bill of lading, not required. You don't need one okay, when you're shipping a lithium battery in this manner. So that's number one. Uh, placards on the truck, you don't need that either. These are class nine uh, hazardous materials, and a placard is never required on a truck, no matter how much class nine you're hauling. Check out this video if you don't believe me on that one. Okay, so no placards on the truck, um, which also translates to then that the driver doesn't need the hazmat endorsement on their CDL. Okay, so that could save you in your shipping costs. Um, now. There is a requirement for a lithium battery mark. I'm going to show you that in just a second here. But uh, you may be required to display the new lithium battery mark on the package, um, but only, okay, only if you have more than two batteries in a single package or more than two packages in a single consignment. Okay, so let me say that again. Let's make sure we're clear on that. You do not need the lithium battery mark on the package unless you have more than two batteries in a single package or more than two packages in a single consignment. And a consignment is the entire shipment leaving your facility, going to one destination at one time. Okay, so if you're shipping one battery in one package, you don't need the lithium battery mark. If you're shipping two batteries, each with a battery in it, you don't need the lithium battery mark. But if you were shipping three packages, each with one battery in it, now suddenly all of them need the lithium battery mark. Okay, I've got a video here. You can take a look at a lot more about the lithium battery mark, what it looks like, its requirements, its specifications, all of that. Okay, now there's something new, and this is relatively new. As of March 6, 2019, okay, I'm making this video in June, but as of March uh, 6 of 2019, there is a new marking requirement for your lithium batteries. Okay, so pay attention to this. This additional package mark is required on your lithium battery contained in equipment if the net weight of the battery in a single package is greater than five kilograms, okay? So the battery itself, you put it on a scale, or if you have multiple batteries, whatever, but the batteries that are in a single package, if the net weight of that battery is greater than five kilograms, not the equipment, just the battery, if it is greater than five kilograms, then you have an additional package mark that you must display on the package, it basically forbids that package to go on a passenger aircraft. Now you're thinking, wait a second, he said this is only by ground, right, by highway or rail, so this isn't going anywhere near an airport, why would I need to warn people away from a passenger aircraft? You just do, okay? It's a new thing, it's a new package mark, it's required on both lithium ion and lithium metal, okay? and even if your lithium battery contained in equipment is staying on the ground, you still have to display this particular mark that warns against the package ever going on a passenger aircraft as cargo. I've got a video here that explains what that could look like. There's all sorts of different options for how you display that mark. And so the video here will explain that 
in more detail. Make sure your package has that. If the battery or batteries in a single package weigh more than five kilograms, okay? All right, um, so uh, is there anything else? No, that's it. Like I said earlier, no shipping papers, no placards on the truck. Um, you don't need to provide emergency response information. There isn't, get this, there isn't even a need for training. If this is all you do is ship smaller lithium batteries, then you don't even need the US DOT hazmat employee training, which is what I do, okay? Now, here's the challenge though. These regs can be so complicated. To, to understand them and for your personnel to understand them may take some level of training, okay? But it doesn't take the full-blown, it is, does not require for this, the full-blown USDOT hazmat employee training. You don't need that as long as you comply with these regulations. Okay, so quick sum up here in the takeaway. First off, the transportation of lithium batteries in commerce is complicated. This was just one configuration, uh, one type of battery, smaller batteries, limited modes. We didn't even talk about air or vessel or shipping batteries alone or shipping lithium batteries uh, in equipment with a spare. And we didn't get into bigger lithium batteries. We didn't get into any of that. Those are for later videos. So it's very complicated. Keep in mind that your carrier, like FedEx or UPS or whomever, they can add to this. They can add their own requirements and make it more difficult as long as they don't contradict the regulations, right? We gotta comply with the regs. Um, and again, even though training isn't required for this particular packaging, it still is a good idea to know the regs and make sure you and your people know all about them. So, thank you. Hi, I hope you liked that video. I hope it gave you information. I hope it helped you. So if you could help me out, that'd be great as well. You can subscribe to my channel. You can view the other videos that I've had, or you can connect with me on social media, check out my website, and always feel free to contact me if you have a question. Thank you.